What we were talking about with the activities and entertainment committee is um, making sure that we have programs that are educational for children. Uh, that's the main focus of this, is to make sure that our children learn how to eat healthy, how to uh, go from food to table, which is what she was talking about earlier. So we're thinking about doing different type of festivals according to the season, strawberry festival, if there's a uh, you know, Halloween time, we get pumpkins out, we we'll do something with that, we we'll do some education as well, uh, teaching kids how to cook and, and cook healthy, because uh, a lot of times we're stuck in fast food babies, and that's not a healthy way to live, and you know, if we plan on being on this earth for a while, we need to be a little bit more healthy about what we're doing, or we're going to have some real out of shape young people, I mean, look at me, I have diabetes and a whole bunch of different things which prompted me to start eating healthy. I've already lost 65 pounds and my goal is to lose another 50, so that's why I got it. I don't want my kid to have the same problem either. Uh, and also, we were talking about uh, providing some type of entertainment that's family-based. You know, we want this to be something that families can feel comfortable coming to. You know, getting the fresh produce and also having something entertaining for their kids because when you go shopping, your kids are not really into what you're shopping for. But if we can give them something that's entertaining, that you can actually enjoy what you're doing and get your stuff done and entertain your children at the same time, and they learn something. Because they're going to do cooking classes and different things like that. Um, probably giving seedlings, teaching them how to grow plants, plant things. So it's going to be a whole family round event to help people just become more healthy and more knowledgeable. And, uh, and of course, we're going to uplift Raytown and improve a lot of different things in the downtown area by providing this, bringing more people in and helping them see that, you know, this is a place that you want to raise your children. Okay, and next, Lori, would you like to check on the Hello, my name is Lori Bottoms, and I have been appointed to help with the be in charge of the fundraising and finance committee and trying to get some funds going so that this doesn't come out of the pocket of Raytown. We're going to be self-sustaining on that. So um, we need a lot of help. We need a lot of people to help get involved with that. Um, We've talked about, you know, different types of fundraisers that we're going to be looking at. We're looking at grants, which should be pretty easy to get a lot of grants because um, this is a great, you know, opportunity. Um, and just some different things in the community that we're looking at doing. So we need people to volunteer for this committee and help us out with that. So that's, kind of, that's all that. <laughs> Something that Steve wanted me to mention um, and that I had forgotten to mention was that we are working in conjunction with um, different organizations like the Kansas City Community Gardens. Uh, they have in, uh, will be coming out and doing demonstrations on gardening and and planting, not just with the children, but for adults, uh, teaching about uh, organic farming methods and, and different things that instead of using insecticides and pesticides. Also, um, we're gonna be working with the, the Jackson County Beekeepers Association or and the Missouri Beekeeping Association, have them come and teach on pollinators and, and teach us about bees and why we need bees in the garden and what we can plant to encourage the bees um, to come in and also to uh, working with the MU Extension on, on multi different levels. As my, I myself am a master gardener, uh, we're going to have master gardeners come in and teach on um, uh, not only growing vegetables but also growing flowers because it's very important to have uh, flowers that will encourage bees and good insects to come into your garden to kill all the bad insects. And, um, you know, and different things like that. We have the MU Extension um, nutritionists, uh, people like Karen Elliott that I've worked with in the past who has uh, come in and taught canning classes at the Raytown Community Church. Uh, in conjunction with a couple of years ago, she taught canning classes. 
And so she's in charge of a lot of the nutritionists, and they've been going out to the local farmer's markets and doing cooking demonstrations. A lot of times people, when they go to a farmer's market, there might be a new vegetable that they've never seen before, or maybe a vegetable that they've wanted to try. I mean, a lot of people haven't tried kohlrabi, and so they look at it and think, what do I do with the kohlrabi? Um, and so a lot of times they do demonstrations on kind of odd food at the market and, and teach people and educate people on how to eat that eat it and so um, yeah I think that's uh, we've been working in conjunction with Captain Kelly with Cultivate KC who has um, been on our board as our committee as an advisor and advising us with the setup and the running of a farmers market um, you know helping us with our ideas um, and, and working through the different th aspects of the market so we are working with other groups to help uh, create um, the best, uh, not only the best market for um, the consumers in Raytown, but also the, the best market that we can provide for the local um, uh, grower, producer, vendors. Because we want to encourage people, there's a lot of small scale farmers uh, here in the metro, actually in the metro area, urban farmsteading and urban agriculture is on the rise um, and uh, a lot of small farmers uh, are looking for uh, markets to sell their produce at and they may not be big enough to afford to go to some of the larger markets but you know I think Raytown would be a great place for them to come and, and sell their produce to help the local economy. So, I mean, that's a lot of information to get out in a lot in a very short time. And this group's been meeting since August, trying to get all this stuff put together. Uh, and what we found is there's just so much information out there on how to try to do a good market. Uh, it's taken a little bit of time to produce that. Our website should be up and running, I'd say, within a week or so. Uh, and it's going to be very simple to go through. There's going to be information on uh, who the vendors will be at that uh, farmer's market. You'll be able to click on each vendor, find out exactly what they're producing, whatever they want to have on that website. Uh, it will be reviewed, but I mean, speaking for them, I mean, the, the information will be uh, very helpful for anybody that wants to get in and come to the market and know that they're going to be, uh, at least be able to find certain things that they're looking for. Uh, the way the uh, farmers market's been set up map-wise, um, we're going to request that the farmer, each grower vendor uh, actually has a specific color tint so that uh, when people get information at the information booths, they'll know exactly whether it's an organic or certified organic or who, you know, it could be just a, uh, uh, what do you call conventional. it? Conventional or uh, producer, not a producer, but natural the, producer. Right, exactly. Uh, and, and you know, the there'll be a different color tint for the arts and crafts or the uh, uh, nonprofits and so forth. So it'll be colorful too. That's the other thing that I wanted to make sure. I've seen farmers markets where they're all the tints are white and they're all plain. I mean, I, I try to not to be that. You know, <laughs> that way as an architect, I, I like color. So, uh, it, I mean, we're really wanting to make this a fun place for people to go. And it's going to take the help of the community. Uh, obviously, tonight, we're just getting the first starts on this. Uh, we will probably, within the next two weeks, establish another date uh, for more information. Uh, simply because once all this information is in on our website, it's going to be a lot easier for our people to get that information uh, uh, for themselves. The other thing is we'll try to set up another date at City Hall because I think it's important people recognize City Hall as a place to do community business and I think we'll have to find a date that's available that we won't have to you know, worry about the court systems or you know, the normal city business that happens there. Um, we're very fortunate here tonight to have a couple of city council people, Steve Mock and Janet Emerson. Uh, Tommy, I know, sits on the planning commission here. Uh, so, I mean, 
we do have people that want to contribute to this community here, and they know how to get the word out to, to people. So uh, we're going we're gonna to have Diana with the new Raytown Brooking Eagle paper. Glad to see that second paper here. Uh, I mean, and, and wonderful piece on the information for today. Thank you so much. Uh, and I mean, I'm just, I'm just really excited. As Main Street president this year, um, it's we've been looking for a way of trying to change the dynamic downtown, and this this can be a very beneficial thing for this the city of Raytown. And the more we can bring the community together, the more I think we'll be able to have a better community, and that's one of our goals here. The last thing I'm going to mention real quick. It's <laughs> Andy. Uh, in regards to the farmer's market, part of this all came about because of Elisa's desire to have a community garden. Uh, that came up with, uh, also from Bill McFerrin and Pete Laughlin. Pete Laughlin, a lot of you know, might know Pete, he's a landscape architect here in town. He actually drew up the plans for the 63rd Street Community Gardens. Uh, this year we received a $6,000 grant from the Jackson County Health Department, and that's allowed us to put in 22 additional uh, beds and also a, uh, a garden shed that we're currently working on. Um, so we're going to need some volunteers even even for that so we can finish it up. There's not a lot left to do, but you know it's getting to be winter and the thing needs to be painted. And anybody that might have a spray rig, it be helpful. Uh, and um, I'm trying to think of what else. Um, you know, we have the information here on the Raytown Main Street if you're looking to find some more information on that. Um, and I'm just really looking forward to this. I've already talked with Vicki Turnbow at the Chamber of Commerce. She wants to have a ribbon cutting for both the uh, opening of the farmer's market. Or not, first thing it'll open will be the community garden. And do you have a date when you're going to actually officially open that? Is that going to be like March? When would first planning be? Probably March. Okay. So we'll have something coming out on that so that uh, people, I mean, uh, the, the community gardens is a place for a lot of people just to come together that might not have the ability in their own backyards to do a, a garden plot or even if um, you don't want to tear up your backyard, you want to have it you know, in, in a community setting. There's going to be learning uh, opportunities there on how to grow and grow more organically. There's going to be uh, things in the garden shed so you won't have to be bringing tools and everything. We're going to try to make it as easy as possible. Neil Clevenger with the Raytown Water Company has already uh, serviced the uh, garden plot with a uh, water hydrant and everything. So there is water available already there. Uh, so it's just uh, for a small maintenance fee, it's going to be a very good opportunity for our uh, local community people to come out. Uh, we're hoping to do about another 15 to 20 beds next year uh, and at some point type out around 50 or 50 plus. Uh, there's already uh, beds being used. Uh, people were there this weekend harvesting some stuff. Uh, Yay. <laughs> and uh, but the beds we also have four educational beds. Yeah, right? and the and the Eames children garden in those four beds because they're with yours. part of the, the yes so, part of the home school. Yeah. So I mean we're we're not only doing this for the community for people to have a garden bed, but we're also trying to do it to teach our, our young kids there. So it, it goes right in hand with the things that we're doing with the farmers market. Um, other than that, uh, I don't have any more. I'll take any kind of questions that you all might have, or if you have a question for Lisa, you can ask her. Uh, yes. Is anyone in charge of PR? You said we ought to be able to get the word out, but you know, nothing specific. Um, we have been trying to do that as a group right now, but uh, we would love a great PR person. Once, you know one? Once the, lo once the logo. <laughs> and yeah, once, and once, once I mean, one of the things we have been waiting on, though, is just the logo, the website. I mean, I think it's important to, uh, and we believe it's, it's important to have a good, solid foundation to build that off of and so within the next week or two we should have all those things established to where we can really start getting, getting the information out. There's a lot of people out there that want the information. So. And then right after that we'll have the uh, next meeting.
I was gonna say, sign in on the sign in sheet, and yeah. any like if you have something that you want to do and you're good at, then put it next to your name, and then we'll like we'll call you sure. immediately. <laughs> as soon as we and have stuff one. ready to go. Yeah. yeah. Well, and actually, uh, we've been meeting on Monday nights at mm -hmm. six thirty uh, at my office. Uh, my office is at sixty five thirty two Blue Ridge Cutoff. Uh, Anybody that wants to come to those meetings can come to those meetings at 6.30 uh, and, and just start working with us on it. I mean, the whole idea is we want to put the best market out there that's going to bring the most people into the community uh, to visit. I mean, most of you know that uh, people will go to farmers markets, a long, they'll drive a long way to get to a good one. And we want this to be a good one. And uh, being centrally located where we're at, I mean, I, I believe we can draw in from Blue Springs, Lee Summit. People actually start coming back here for something instead of going out. So that'd be nice. Uh, any other? But definitely, if you would like to work with the PR, uh, we'll be happy. Okay, great. Yes, Diane. Is this going to be in closed news? I mean, is this going to be a year round activity at the farmer's market? The, it's, Going to go from about the first of May to I think the middle of October. The last of October. Yeah, last of October. Um, no, there'll be ten by ten tents, or basically pop up tents. No. Uh, the uh, well, we'll have, we'll do we'll have to do whatever the city requires us to do to have the, you know an ongoing every. I mean, right now we're talking about Thursdays and possibly Saturdays, but I mean, again, that's coming together with the different uh, uh, committees. But yeah, whatever the city requires us to do so that we can meet on those days, we'll have to comply with. Uh, um, it would be great to have about another 10 volunteers. Uh, once everything is set up, uh, we don't expect that there have to be a lot of volunteers at the farmers market actual events. Uh, there will be obviously the activities going on and uh, people in charge of those activities, but uh, the uh, farmers market will have an informational booth. Raytown Main Street Association will be there with their own booth uh, for information. We'd love to have uh, the various groups from the city, you know, Parks and Rec, Public Works. I mean, anybody that has information to get out to the uh, to the public, it'd be great for them. I mean, I'd love to see Parks and Rec set up once a month in the spring to give out information on what's happening in Parks and Rec, or just any kind of general information from the city uh, would be helpful for the community uh, because there'll be a lot of people there. What about times? Saturday morning, 9 or 7 o'clock, uh, we, we haven't got into very specifics on that, but uh, I think Elisa, you a, probably... A typical, a typical Saturday morning market opens at about 8 a.m. and goes till 1. And then um, if it, a lot of the, the afternoon or evening markets, some of them open quite late, like they open at 4 and they're only open till 7.30. Um, but I and the committee have looked at maybe opening it earlier, like two o'clock. So it's open for, um, a longer time period during that section because I think a lot of people commute in and out. And um, what we've done is we've, we were, we're talking in the middle of talking with vendors. And we, one of the questions on the vendor survey is, is, um, what are your pros and cons? And I've also gotten on the websites of the other farmers markets in the area where they ask for people to make comments. And one thing is, is um, some farmers market actually, they open maybe at noon, but they close at five. Well, people are just getting off work between four and five. And so if we extended the market till a, a, you know later, a little bit after dinner, um, then those people could come from work and they could shop and they could, you know, take the produce home with them. So, you know, we're just kind of, right now, as long as the vendor producer surveys, the grower producer surveys are out, and we're asking them, you know, what what they want, and also the community server surveys, like, what do you want? You know, we're, we're just, you know, kind of weighing the, the different options. Okay, uh, 
same lot because the lot's big enough. But um, the visitors coming in, yeah, we're going to have to try to find, I mean, I know there's parking across the street a little bit, but as soon as that uh, green space gets developed, we're not sure uh, if that parking will be available. I haven't talked with Bonnie Beach yet. She's got a small lot out in front of hers for additional parking. She's not there on Saturdays. Uh, and so it might be that she'll allow us. She has allowed us in the past to use part of her lot. Um, there is parking down by the painters union a little bit. Uh, as long as we. So we'll be identified where they can park. Right, know, right. right. And, and that's still something that we'll need to work out with Andy. I mean, I don't know how. Uh, if, if, if there's wide enough streets that the way where they can park on one side of the street. I know there's two lanes and a turning lane on Raytown Road right now. And so, uh, you know, we can't close down that street or anything, and we're not looking at doing any of the, uh, closing down the streets. But, yeah, that's one of the things that we'll have to be addressing is uh, where people park. And, you know, the other thing along with this, I mean, like I said before, this is a, uh, hopefully just a temporary location. Hopefully we can work with the city in finding a, a permanent location where we can actually establish a little bit better parking scenarios. Uh, because, you know, it's like a church. I mean, if you don't provide the parking, people aren't going to come. So we have to find a way uh, of uh, providing enough parking spaces. And, you know, it, it, believe it or not, Main Street has done a survey of downtown as to how many parking spaces there are. And there's, there's a lot of parking spaces, believe it or not, around the edges. And uh, people just have to be willing to walk a little way sometimes to get where they want. Uh, I would love to see 50 to 100 people there on a regular basis, and hopefully we can support that with parking. Well, one more thing, entertainment. Yeah. I heard that. And you were talking about entertainment. I didn't hear anything about entertainment. Yeah, we're going to provide low plaques, um, music, whatever we can find that uh, is appropriate for families. So that's what the entertainment committee is going to do. We're going to look around find those acts, bring those acts in. I think it'd be great. Yeah. And so, you know, like I said, people have something to do, family friendly. Yeah. I mean, I remember growing up, and I grew up on the Air Force Base, and there was always something going on that was family friendly. And that's one of the things, that's part of the reason why I moved to Raytown is because of the size of it and looking for that aspect. And so now, I was originally involved in uh, Raytown Reaching for Tomorrow to start changing stuff downtown. So I'm back involved because I, I want to see that happen. Yeah. One, one of the things that we have found out, Steve, is that uh, normally we might be able to anticipate between 20 and 25 vendors the first year, and then that will steadily grow. Um, the site works really well for about 44 to 45 vendors, but we can do more if, 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 up to about 54. Uh, the site will hold. So, uh, you know, realizing that, you know, it's got to have a start just like anything else. And, you know, we're not trying, it'd be great if we had 40 vendors the first year. I mean, but we were trying to be realistic with that too. Uh, people always check things out to see how they're doing, how they're well they're run, you know, what's really going on before they uh, get involved. So. All right. Thanks. And people will walk for park. I mean, to go to the farmers market when I go with my family. I mean, it would. I would park at City Hall and walk down the street yeah, to the farmers true. market in Raytown. It's not like it's a big deal. I mean, you know, yeah. it's hard to walk so blocks it's... because you want that fresh produce and you want those activities and you know, if there's entertainment and those kinds of things. People will walk for that. I mean, especially when it's nice out. You know. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the uh, parks. Are you guys working with parks? Yeah, and, and, and we, we still are. Matter of fact, the uh, chance that we had to talk with Kevin uh, this evening while we thought we might be down there, <laughs> well, it was very important. I mean, he was very excited about having the farmer's market. He, and I mean, he, he would like to be able to be involved 
as much as possible. Uh, because, I mean, it goes right hand in hand with Parks and Rec. I mean, there's no question. But it, it's a community thing. that USDA grant? Right, right. There, there are so many grants available for this. That's, I mean, that's one of the reasons why the Raytown Main Street put in a proposal on that RFP was because there are so many grants available for not only farmers market but educational things and even relocation of streets and wide street improvements that I mean and I don't want to get into that because that's still something with the city uh, they haven't sent out a lot of information but um, you know we got a vision for the downtown obviously but I mean we got to collectively work together to make sure everything happens the way it needs to happen and so uh, we gave the city an idea uh, with what we proposed and and hopefully they might be able to take some of that idea and incorporate it into uh, any anybody that actually answered the development because obviously we don't have any money <laughs> so we're gonna have to work for everything we got any other questions well, all I can ask you to do is help us get the word out. Uh, and we'll let everybody know that's here when the website's up and running. And that way, uh, I mean, the way, I'm just in the electronic age, I mean, I think we could contact all 30,000 people in the city of Raytown probably within about two hours if everybody got on their email list and just emailed everybody. So, anyway. Any other questions or comments? Yes. I'm a member of the Raytown Garden Club, and uh, at our monthly meeting, I let everybody know that uh, we're starting this market. Is that and, with uh, Sanford's or the Sanford's Garden Club? Oh, uh, Teresa Sanford? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. She's my next door neighbor. Okay. So she talks about it a lot. Okay. Yeah, and I'm also a member of the Raytown uh, Artists Association, and our meeting is coming up soon, and uh, I'll be letting everybody know about it there also. And Great.